When we have an, an expectation and an anticipation of what God's going to do, listen, through his promise in our life, he will always exceed our expectation. Always. Uh, uh, when you're in faith, faith moves mountains. Faith, the faith that we have is the, the, the faith of God that, that calls those things which be not as though they were and gives life to the dead. See, the world's thinking, well, that thing's dead. To you, it's not. Why? Because of the God. We serve the God of life. And it's always, listen, it's always a life for life exchange. See, that's what's happening right here. The, this word is life. It's, it, 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 but, 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 but there's a condition on it, remember? There's no condition to God loving you. There's a condition to every promise that God has for us. So the condition is, it's this word, now listen, is life to those who find it and health to all their flesh. So you, what, what, what's your responsibility? I got to find it. So finding it, it's coming, it's almost like this. You have to open up the windows of your heart and allow God's word in. See, Isaiah 43, 16 says, Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power. They shall, they shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinguished. They are quenched like a wick. Don't remember the former things. Now listen to this, nor consider the things of old. You're like, wait a minute. So don't let the things of old factor into how you think now. See, some of you guys, like, like I'll just tell you, for me, I wasn't a very good student. I think I, I, I had the aptitude, my, like, like how I remember teachers and coaches, I had aptitude, but I don't know that my follow-through was there. So in essence, I read one book my whole life. I read one book. I didn't read it over and over, just one time. It was the Richie Ashburn story. He was, a, he was an infielder for the Phillies in the 60s. It's crazy, okay? Then I become a Christian, and everyone carries a Bible. There weren't any smartphones in 1979. So everybody's carrying a Bible, and those things are thick, man. And the, the pages are so fine, and the, the print is so small. And, and people would able to just flip through it and find Isaiah 43. And I'm like, dear God, how'd you find that? Because to me, I'd say, turn to page 782. And then we could find it real quickly. But finding Isaiah 43, we, I got to flip through it. I got to try to find it. And then I realized in the competitive thing in me, because these guys are lapping me, I'm like, okay, I got to read this book. And then guess what happened? Life, I, I started to find life in it. I'm like, wait a second. Lay hands on the sick and they recover. What are we doing? Why are we sitting around? Sick are all around us. Okay, and then you learn, lay, lay hands on no man suddenly. There's a receptivity that people have to have to make this, this, the, the conditions work. But, but in looking at it, you can't consider the things of old. I can't consider that I was a poor student. I can't consider that I never read. I just have to start reading and keep reading. Just write that down. If you, don't, if you don't hear another thing I say today, start reading the Bible and just keep reading it. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Just like a great coach would do if you were an athlete or if you were a mus musician. Behold, I will, do, here's what God says. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. It's going to jump into your life. That's how God does things. How you know it's God is it just springs up in your life. Shall you not know it? I'll even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. See, God graces us for all the interactions of our lives. Like God has graced Thomas significantly in areas that I'm not graced in. Why? Because those, that, those are aspects of his life. Those are interactions of his life. And see, we've got to understand that. And what God's given me a grace for y'all. Some of you are awesome. Some of you are awkward. I'm believing God for more awesome than awkward. But, 
But the, but the, but, and I'm, I say that and I mean it, but because God's graced me for this. Like people say, how do you do it? I was like, I don't even think about it anymore. And it's not just muscle memory because the word is stored in me now. And when you get the storage of the word to a point in your life where it's like, well, be into me if I don't preach it. I mean, there's so many times I'd, I'd be out in the street preaching, I'd be in bars preaching, I'd be in alleys preaching, I'd be in parking lot preaching, I'd be in a gas pump preaching, and I'd, I'd be in a bar preaching because, man, this isn't a church house. It's like, well, well let's, let's make it that. All we need is a preacher. That's me. Let's go. But see, woe be unto me if I don't preach it. Why? Because so much of the word's stored up in my heart. It's hard for me to, to bite my tongue. It's like, wait a minute, this is craziness. This has gone from silly to crazy to evil. And see, that's how the devil does it. See, none of the word is silly, even though it, it's awkward, even though it's, uh, it's not natural, it's supernatural, but it's not silly. And we've got to understand that. So God graces us for the interactions of our life. We raise kids and we find out, man, he's got a grace on his life that's, that's powerful. Let's feed that. Let's feed that grace, that, that help in time of need that's in him for people. See, in the grace that's on our life, it, it, we, we look at it and we look at it internally like it's for us and it's for, it's for the people around us. See, for some of you guys, God's graced you to make money. Well, in turn, then God's graced you to give. God's graced you with, a genero with generosity. Otherwise, it's going to go through your fingers like it does people in the world. It's easy come and easy go. See, God's grace, here's what it looks like, real simply. God's grace looks like open doors and closed doors. See, I love half of, of a few of the promises. One of the promises is Jesus, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I love the Alpha and the beginning part. And I'm like, oh yeah, the omega in the end. I love that he opens doors no man can close. I love that part. It's like, oh shoot, he closes doors no man can open. Because how much of life do you, do you walk up on a closed door and you want to kick it in and you're like, no, I want what's behind there. Why? Because it's your flesh, it's carnality in you. And God's going to keep those doors closed to us. And we've got to be taking the doors that God supernaturally opens. His, his grace looks like this. It looks like I can do that because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Everything God's promised is what I can do. And the, 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 the spectrum of, of what God's promised is, is vast. It's just, I fit into it. But then it's also, I can get out of this situation. Some of you guys that are in debt, guess what God's graced you to do? Get out of it. But you're like, well, how do I do it? You've got to find grace. You've got to, the, the Bible says, you find mercy and obtain grace in time of need. You've got to obtain the grace. How do you do that? You store up God's word in your heart. It's alive, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. See, and generations, this is interesting, and I'm learning this in real time. But generations in a family and in a church. See, I know that it's trendy for us to call this community. What are you looking for? I'm looking for community. Well, okay, then we're all Cardinal fans. How about that? Go Jags. All right? But it, it, it's, it, it, it's not that. It's family. See, Paul called Timothy's son, he called people brothers. It's family. See, generations help us know who we are. It, it really honestly. Because why? Because we value wisdom and understanding that comes with older generations. But guess what? We also have to adapt to technology, which comes from younger generations personal engagement, handshakes. I mean, I mean, literally, fellas, sit up, put your shoulders back, get your head up. If someone approaches you, you stand. 
Your handshake's fair, firm, and friendly, and you look them in the eye. And then something pretty good might come from that. You know, in Oklahoma, and I'm not sure, I should have checked on this between services. And if I'm wrong, correct me privately. Don't do it publicly. Um, but I think that a handshake's a, a, a legal, it, it, it's a, I'm sorry? That, that a handshake in the state of Oklahoma is a binding contract. And somebody go, well, that's just old fashioned. No, that's how things should be. That's what our handshake should mean. But see, that's got to be taught. That's got to be coached. Man, if you guys have a son or even a daughter for that, that doesn't look people in the eye when they speak to her, you have to train that. You have to teach that. Eye contact's important. And let me tell you, I could, I could teach a, 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 mo, a series of classes on eye contact. The Bible says your eyes are the windows of your soul. Well, you always hide in your eyes. There's something you're hiding on the inside. See, we've got to understand that. God's always leading us upward to purpose. See, you're not going to find your purpose laterally. The Bible says promotion doesn't come from the north, south, east, or west. It comes from above. Your, your purpose is your promotion. And this is the, the main purpose of leadership in our lives is to get us to elevate. I mean, that's the demand. That's why it's hard. It's hard for some people to sit through church week, month, year in and year out and not elevate and be able to stick. There's a demand on your life as a parishioner of Guts Church to elevate your life. Man, it, it, I, I, we, the Pastor Sandy, I ran into somebody yesterday. They said, man, how, how's it going, man? This is a record year. How? With everything that's happening, how is this a record year? Well, it's the favor of God. It's God's grace to him. See, we've got to understand this. We've got to look at it. That we obtain grace. We find mercy and obtain grace. You know what I prayed for yesterday? Mercy in America. God, with what we're going, with decisions that have to be made at the highest levels of government in America, God, I cry out for mercy for America. You know why? Because I, I, I came into this and it was 50-50 people that went to church and people that didn't. I've been in it for 30 years now, and guess what it is now? 2080. 20% of people go to church. We are not doing our jobs. We're not walking in our positions. We're not walking in our offices. See, there's a gift of prophecy, but then there's the office of the prophet. And I think now, because the church has been minimized in people's lives, the gift of prophecy is just mushrooming me everywhere. It didn't really do so well in 2020 at the election time. But let me just, let me help you. The office of, of prophet, that's to be revered. That's, a, that's an elevated position in the body of Christ. But you know, you know, you know why it's happened? Because that, that 80% can function in the gift of prophecy and just be scatter shooting and just really honestly be blowing windows out is all it is. But that office of prophet in the local church, that's much different. See, I don't want to know the Jesus from the world's perspective. I don't want to know the church, the, the, the church from a world's perspective. I want to know who he is from his word. Now listen, and from people that have walked with him for decades I mean, think about it. We have men and women in this, this room. Pastor Sandy's walked with Jesus for decades. Sean Schaefer's walked with Jesus for decades. Man, see, th there's something to this. Someone who spent time in God's word has prayed in the spirit for extended periods of time, have walked through the fire and through the water, and they're still passionately serving God. That's who I want to be around. Cool shouldn't factor in. I was cool in the 70s. That boat sailed. No, I'm, and, and I, I say that honestly. See, and, and let me just tell you, here, here's what church is. And I, I, I'm not trying to run anybody off. 
but it might. We can't be shoppers anymore. We've got to be buyers. We've got to have buy-in, and that buy-in is little by little. Man, I'm just telling you, it's that widow's might in that offering bucket. That's her buy-in. That's what Jesus, these other guys were given out of their excess, and they were given much more. And they said, what, what's the greatest gift? And there were guys there that gave big amounts. And Jesus said, it's that widow's might. That was the one that touched my heart. That's the one. Why? Because it's all she had. And see, we have to look at this. We have to understand that, wait, this is not a game we're playing. This truly is life and death. It's light and dark. It's heaven and hell. You know, you're going you're gonna to find nicer preachers than me that will say, man, God's got a call in your life, and if you don't do what God's called you to do, he's going to have to find someone else. Well, how many Chris Hearts are there out there? How many Joanna Swaggerts are out there? There's one. If Joanna doesn't do what God's called her to do, I personally believe people suffer. You ready for this? People die and go to hell. We've got to do what God's called us to do. That requires us spending time in his word and time with people that have spent and gone through, been through the fire, man. Maybe have a little bit of limp. See, and, 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 and look at it this, because the writer of Hebrews said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same yesterday. Okay, I get it. He's the same today. Okay, I'm trying to get it. Forever is hard for me to, because you can't calculate it. So forever faithful to God's word is who Jesus is. So we've got to be reflection, a mirror image. Forever faithful to God's word is who Bill and Sandy Shear have to be. Ellen and Dana Webb, got to just forever faithful to God's word. And, 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 and how this works, and, and I'm, I'm seeing the value of the leadership of this church. God's unfolding it before my eyes in real time. But Psalm 145.4 says, One generation shall praise your works to another. Now listen to this. And shall declare your mighty acts. It, it's generational. See, some of you guys were raised or were diagnosed or even raised or taught that you're living under a generational curse. That's your choice. See, to me, what you live under is, is a choice. It could be, it's got to be a generational choice that you make because your granddaddy was an alcoholic cheater and your dad was an alcoholic cheater does not mean that's anywhere close to who you are. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Sandy and I were married 40 years ago, and we one of the first decisions we made is we put an ax to the root of any generational suppression or curse in our lives. We're not passing it. We're not carrying it. We're not passing it to our kids. And guess what? Our marriage is f almost 40 years old, and there, I don't know how many of them there are in our families. I, I think there's one that I know of other than us. But you look at that, why? Because it didn't have any bearing. I'm not bringing that generational suppression because I'm still the guy with my dying breath. I'll be saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So here's the bottom line. I'm not tapping out the fear or anxiety or depression. I'm so grateful to serve in a church that's reaching four generations currently. And that doesn't just happen. You know, the average lifespan of a charismatic church is 20 years. That means there's some that are 20, some that are 25, some that are 15, some that are 40, some that are a year. There's some that are just six weeks. I mean, you look at all the, all the churches that didn't 
endure the pandemic. There's just whiplash when we go from how we do it to having the, the world to dictate how we do it moving forward. The world can't dictate our lives. See, when we build here at Guts Church, we're equipping, here's what's in my heart, and I get it, I'm the 65-year-old guy, but what we're building for is we're building for generations. And no memorials here. The kingdom is what's in our hearts. The kingdom is what we're passing. A kingdom mindset, kingdom marriages, kingdom families, building kingdom kids, having kingdom vocations, where you can take your vocation and you can apply it to the kingdom just like I can. Why? Because we're in season and out of season. Why? Because we're standing on the word. We're rooted and grounded in faith. Whether we're a welder or a custodian or a lawyer or whatever. But when we build, we're equipping generations. And it, it's funny, Taylor jokes about it with me now, but here's how I raised Taylor. Get in the truck. And most times it's like, and there weren't quick trips and stuff all over the place like there are now. So maybe there's a chance we'll pull into a quick trip and get some jujubees or smarties or something. But you know what? We're driving and there'd be, there'd be an, empty, an, an empty building with a sign out. And I'd be stopped at a stoplight and I'd say, you know, we could build a great church in that building. Because I'm a hammer, so everything looks like a nail. Man, we could build a great church in that building. And then he went through junior high and he went through high school and college and just out of college and he's in my truck and we're driving. We stop at a stoplight. He smacked, he backhanded me in the chest. He said, hey, Dad, we could build a great church in that building right there. Kind of being a bit facetious to me. But you know what? Because that was in him. So what are we? We're church builders. Why? Because generations keep stacking up here. So we've got to get better. Man, we've got to have the wisdom and understanding, but we also have to bring the technology in. Can I tell you something? I hate it. I don't own a computer. I have an I, iPad and an iPhone. But... There's 50 computers all over the offices because God's heart, bottom line, whatever generation you, you represent, God's heart is to trust us with his promises. Matthew 25, 21 says, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Do you, see, do you see the elevation here? And then he said this, enter into the joy of the Lord. Man, you're faithful in what's small. You're faithful in a few things. Man, stay faithful. And, and, and how, this, how this works, Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians, he said, now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you've sown, the seed you've sown, the seed, not that you've gathered, the seed you've sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. While you were enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. See, to the sower, here's what God, the, the elements of what God brings to the sower. Not people that are just, hey, I'm listening, I'm trying to absorb it. I'm trying to keep up. I come when it feels like it. You can't be a sower if you don't show up. I'm just telling you, showing up is a big deal. As a husband, as a father, as a mother, you show up. Man, and let me tell you something. Sometimes it's painful. I am a chronic cheer dad. I went through years of trying to find something redemptive, something, something 
in it. But guess what? I had girls. I, all my kids were raised at Union. Friday night, I went to homecoming. Sat next to the student section at Jinx. Still painful. Because my daughter's the Jinx cheer coach. And my grandbaby's down there being held up by girls and I'm making a fool of myself screaming for her. And she's going, stop it, stop it. <laughs> and I can't. See, you have to understand to the sower, he who so shows up and sows, God, listen, supply seed. And you know what? What's the devil going to say? You don't have enough to give. Your gift doesn't matter. Your seed doesn't matter. God will supply seed to whom? The sower. Bread for food. A built-in supply. Do you, know, do you know most, if I'm not, I could say all, but most of the sowers in this room right now, like I put an offer on a building last week. A neighbor building that we have here. When that building goes through, I'm going to write a check. And then I'm going to get up at church and say, I need you to back the check. <laughs> because things are growing. We have, we have need of more space. So, so there's a built-in supply to the sowers for times like that. And then the last one is, he multiplies the storehouse. The storehouse is the church. So he gives seed to the sower, bread for food, food, built in supply, and then multiplies what you're sowing toward. See, Proverbs 11.25 says, a generous soul will be made rich. There's a generous mindset that defies the world's patterns. God's love is unconditional. Our level of life fulfilling God's purpose is conditional upon our obedience. Simple obedience. There's a supernatural miracle flow to our simply sowing into God's purpose in the local church. There's a supernatural flow. God's going to meet us at our level of faith. Provision is guaranteed at our, provision lives at your place of obedience. That's where the provision is. So it's healing and peace and prosperity and vision for life. And it's all tied to our believing, receiving, and proclaiming God's promise. You know, it's interesting. A couple weeks ago, I started kind of just churning. A, I'm like, we need to have a day of miracles. We do a healing a healed service at the end of January. And I thought, man, before this year ends, we need to do a day of miracles, a miracle day. And then, and then I'm, I'm praying about it. And I'm trying not to make it a, a marketing assignment or I don't know what, you know. I'm not a marketer. But, um, and then a few days go by and I'm thinking about it. I'm praying about it. And I'm thinking, man, I need to start talking to some people and kicking the can about it. And then this anti-God religious group decides to have a day of terror. I thought, huh. I was going to have a day of miracles. They're going to have a day of terror. I think we win. Um, it's in us. I'm believing God for miracles in your life today. Right now. Where the suppression is lifted and the elevation comes and you leave here living a miracle life. Because I don't believe it's serendipitous. I believe that the woman with the issue of blood happened to be, she, she put herself in a position where Jesus was going to walk by. I believe 
the crippled man, his, it said, man, I need some help. Four of his friends came and tore the roof off of where Jesus was speaking and dropped him in. See, there's, the reaction is miracles to the actions we take toward God's promise. Let's make a confession of faith today. It's going to be up on the screen. I'm going to, I'm going to profess it, and then I'm, I'm going to ask you to come back and do the same when I get finished. The words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, and how I walk this out determines the blessings I live in life. You can take a picture of it with your phone, but right now we're going to make a profession of faith, a declaration of faith. I'm going to, dec- I'm going to, I'm going to put the word of God in front of me. It's going to become the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, and dictate the actions of my life that I'm going to walk out. So let's read it all together, and then we'll do it again as a declaration. This is our practice run. We're scrimmaging God's plan right now, okay? Ready? Read. The words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart and how I walk out this determines the blessings I live in life. We need to practice it one more time, okay? Some of you guys are from Broken Arrow, so we're going to let you catch up. No, for real. I, I, have, I, have a, I have a heart for the Broken Arrow folk, okay? Let's, let's read it again. Ready? The words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart and how I walk this out determines the blessings I live in life. Okay, you guys ready? We're making a proclamation of faith right now. We are... We are driving a stake into the ground for our expansion and our elevation. You ready? Declare right now. Go. You get to determine your blessings. I call today a day of miracles. I call today a day of blessings. I call today a day of elevation. I call a day of Counterterrorism, terror, terrorism. No evil shall befall you, nor any plague come near where you live. You're the head and not the tail, above only and never beneath. Greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. You're created in Christ Jesus for great works, for you to walk in them. Thank you so much for tuning in to Guts Church YouTube channel. I'm Pastor Chano Trevino, the assistant pastor here at Guts Church. And on behalf of our leadership team, our staff, our church, it's our hope that this message met you right where you are. If it did, I bet there's someone you know who could use the encouragement of this message in their life. And you sharing it with them can make all the difference. The mission of Guts Church is to help people win. And you can be a part of that simply by sharing, or better yet, inviting someone to tune into Guts Church online with you every week. Take that next step to be a part of what God is doing right now in this moment in time by being committed to showing up, placing a premium on God's word, and receiving all that God has for you. You can share this message, gather your friends for services, make it a priority to make this the place you want to be. God has so much for you. I truly believe that. We love you. We're praying for you. Can't wait to see you soon.